Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to today's webinar as we look to talk to you about the industrial SBCs, the success that we're seeing there, and the next choice for professionals. My name is Richard Curtin. I'm the CTO at OKDO, and I'm also the Chief Innovation Officer for the RS Group. And for those of you who don't know, OKDO, um, we are a design solutions company. Um, part of the RS Group, who are a global industrial electronics uh, distributor. Uh, and it's fantastic for us all to be together today and, uh, and share some exciting um, information with you about this incredible SBC market. Uh, I'm joined today uh, by uh, a couple of colleagues uh, that I'd like to introduce. So the first is Pete Woods. Pete Wood is the head of communities for RS Group, and Pete has been in the electronics and technology industry uh, for the longest time. In fact, we often refer to him as the guru, um, has been inspiring engineers uh, for, for the last 20 plus years. And Pete's going to talk to us about the evolution of the SBC industry um, and share some incredible um, updates with you on this call. I'm also joined by Divier Sassita. Uh, Divier is the senior manufacturing buyer for OKDO, and uh, Divier has a wealth of experience in technical supply chain roles uh, across multiple large companies. And now Divier is res responsible for our manufacturing and customization of our global technology strategy. And I'm absolutely delighted to have Pete and Divya with us today. So with that, I'm going to hand over to Pete, who's going to kick us off and introduce a little bit of background of where SBCs have come from and where they are going. Pete, over to you. Great. Thanks, Richard. Um, cool. So look, let's, um, let's take a look at SBCs and how they've evolved uh, since the early introduction in the early in the early days in the early 70s. So if we can drop on to the next slide. Um, you can see here. So the SBCs, I think probably most of you know, are basically a single board computer that is capable of running an operating system. And the first commercially available SBC was in fact the Apple One, which you can see there up on the top left. And that was designed by the co-founder of Apple, uh, Steve Wozniak. So um, since then, there's been various SBCs on the market, mainly for PC motherboards, and more recently, SBCs like the TI Beagle board uh, had appeared. But it wasn't until like 2012 when the Raspberry Pi landed, um, which had a real focus towards the teaching of the next generation of software and hardware engineers, but it also reimagined the maker industry. It kind of re kickstarted it actually out of the, out of the shadows of, of maker spaces and brought it into the into the real world and the whole um industry was also shaken up by the adoption of this board by middle-aged geeks like myself and probably some of you guys on the call as well so it was all about you know you guys like us who cut our teeth on 1980s computing like the bbc micro and the commodore 64 um though that co cohort really helped establish and energize and move forward the single board computing you know for that single little 35 dollar computer and brought that adoption right up into, into various um, areas. So if you fast forward a number of years now, there's been many clones after that, um, lots of alternatives on the market. But um, what we've been able to see is that actually industry has really started to notice the value of these SPCs. When you look at build versus buy, particularly those who are software led companies with limited hardware experience, or, or they're looking to do something that's relatively low volume and it doesn't warrant doing a PCB layout design and, and test and all the complications and costs that go behind that. Sometimes a single board computer is exactly the right thing for the job. So if we move on to the next slide, let's have a look um, really about the, you know, the current landscape and where we are today. So over the last few years, there's been an increased demand in SBCs and the surge in popularity driven by applications in education, hobbyist projects, professional development, they've all led to that significant increase. Now, the Raspberry Pi quickly became that dominant player in the SBC market, and it's arguably the most well-known and accessible board on the market. However, 
due to this, Raspberry Pi had faced, you know, victim of its own success. It had faced many challenges in terms of fulfilling demand through that widespread adoption. So the other thing that we need to look at, obviously, is the global su supply chain issues, which we have all seen as, as engineers and designers. And that's been caused by the semiconductor shortages, and that's resulted in a lot of the delays in manufacturing and the delays in getting released out for some of these new board technologies. So also that high demand during the pandemic, uh, that further heightened the demand of SBCs, when we saw more individuals and businesses, they turned to these versatile little computers as solutions for remote working and various projects, et cetera. So the other thing now is obviously the rise of, of AI. AI is everywhere and SBCs are finding their way into these AI applications. And this has also contributed to that surge in demand and placing additional strain onto the supply chain. So finally, as a response to the shortages, you know, users and businesses have started to explore alternative SBC options because the Raspberry Pi is just one of many that are out there on the market. Um, you can look at big industry players like um, BeagleBoard and Asus, all these type of companies that they've sought to capitalize on the supply gaps and try to provide competitive options to the alternatives that are currently out on the market. And we've also seen the mainstream adoption of the Chinese-based solutions, so Orange Pi, Banana Pi, Redaxa, those kind of boards. And Redaxa actually has led to OKDU becoming an official manufacturer and distribution partner of the Rock Range, which we'll talk about a bit more detail as we move forward. So um, if we look at the efforts to address the shortages, manufacturers and distributors in the SBC ecosystem, you know, they've taken steps to address this into optimizing production, exploring alternative suppliers and adapting and evolving to the semiconductor trends in the industry to make sure that they can produce boards in the supply chain. So how can SBCs help me? Well, well basically, they are great for a whole host of applications in the industrial world. They're um, harnessing the power of SBCs for product designers can create, you know, cutting edge technologies, competitive offerings, and we can redefine the customer expectations. Let's look at a couple of examples. There's quite a few here on the on the diagram. But if we pull out, for example, manufacturing, so on the production line. Now, um, on the production line, enabling predictive and prevent preventative maintenance is one big thing that's happening in the industry at the moment. If you're monitoring machine health in real time, you know, these devices excel at quality control, precisely analyzing manufacturing data to detect defects and ensure the highest production standards. And their versatility extends to orchestrating synchronized workflows, reducing downtime and ultimately enhancing productivity in the factory environment. So from predictive analytics to seamless process automation control, SBCs are empowering manufacturing to stay agile and competitive um, in this ever growing landscape. So also looking at things like smart agriculture, um, SBCs can act as intelligent hubs facilitating data making data-driven decisions and making for more sustainable and efficient farming practices. But also, you know, farmers can implement that, again, that predictive analytics for crop yield forecasts, reduce resource and wastage, and make more informed decisions and drive sustainable and profitable agricultural operations. So there are really, really versatile boards in many, many industries. If we move on to the next slide. So, this is just a snapshot, I guess, of some of the key players now in this sort of next generation area of single board computing. So we take the Pi 5 there first on the left, for example. Overall, this board, great solid performance. It's got solid connectivity options and has a whole vast range of applications. It's probably, you know, it's a very reliable all rounder, but it's not a massive leap in terms of next generation features compared to its predecessors. Now, most recently, it's been no secret that part of the Pi community has been quite disappointed with respect to the Pi 5. Some are referring it's more as a Pi 4B plus rather than a two next generation. But yes, there are lots of other boards now locking on its door to try and take on those more relevant applications in the industrial space. And we'll talk a bit about that more in a minute. Look at the Orange Pi uh, 5. Uh, that is enhanced CPU configuration, has versatile RAM options, and it makes it great for demand uh, suitable applications for anything that's doing intensive video. So if you're doing video applications, this is a very multimedia centric board. It's great for those types of applications. If you look at the Rock 5A, it has enhanced CPU configuration and robust memory, and it offers a wide array of 
uh, interfaces uh, and again it's a very versatile board for many many projects it does have some great video capability diverse storage options and it's great for demanding computer needs when we look at the 5b now that obviously shares some of the performance similarities with its uh, 5a and it um it also offers a robust set of interfaces and gpio for customization making it suitable for a whole range of device projects that are diverse projects so if we look at the uh, pi 5 and the rock 5 and we look at against the raspberry pi so the orange the orange pi 5 and the rock 5 against the raspberry pi both of those have an advanced sort of enhanced cpus using the rock chip and they both offer improved processing power compared to the Raspberry Pi's Broadcom BCM2712. And both the Orange Pi and the Rock have greater RAM options and video capabilities up to 8K support. And what sets Orange Pi and Rock 5 ahead of it head is the multimedia performance in those sort of applications. So it's great for those. If we look at the Rock 5A and the Rock 5B against the Orange Pi, very similar again, they've both got very similar GPU performance and SOCs. They're both powered by uh, the Rock chip. However, the Rock 5A introduces the enhancements of the 16 gigabyte LPDDR4 RAM and has diverse um, interface options, including the EMMC support and expandability, which is a great feature that none of the other boards have. Um, and not covered in the spec, which DVA is gonna come and look at a little bit more later on, is the customization element. Those rock boards can be customized for your application so you can strip out the components that you don't need and optimizing the application for you. So in summary, basically, while the Rock 5, sorry, the Raspberry Pi 5 maintains its reliability and its market presence, the Orange Pi 5, Rock 5A and Rock 5B showcase the advancements of CPU power, memory configurations and interface options versatility. And that basically positions them as strong contenders for the next generation performance in the SPC landscape. So if you move on to the next slide, this is all about how good enough or making do when you're building industrial applications. So if you look at good enough, so if you're using like a, a regular off the shelf Raspberry Pi, they are very cost effective. They're very user friendly. They're very versatile. The availability generally, and we know that's been obviously changed with the, um, the, the the shortages, but in general, availability is good. However, when you start moving into industrial applications, they, they lack some of the advanced features, the specialized inputs and outputs, the longevity and life cycle, the reliability and redundancy, and the customization support that boards like the Rocks uh, can offer in these circumstances. So when we compare that you know so pro targeting um targeting applications in the pro world while a good enough board serves well for introductory and small scale applications an industrial grade board like the rock is engineered for robustness reliability and has the advanced features for the demanding industrial environments so this makes them a more suitable choice for professionals and large scale industrial applications. And this is where we're seeing the rock win in many of those types of applications. Lower power consumption, um, but high processing power. So excellent cost efficiencies for applications running 24 seven. The rocks can also work on 12 volt batteries. And instead of always needing an AC power, they're excellent for remote use or if you're lacking a mains connectivity nearby. Now, the onboard rock chip, which is the RK35AAS, that's a quad Cortex A76 and a quad Cortex A55. Um, they have uh, configurations that offer sustainable processing capabilities, sorry, substantial processing capabilities, and benefiting from a handful of complex industrial applications. So they're great for doing complex industrial applications out in the field. Rock GPIO and uh, MIPI interfaces support a whole range of protocols. So there's UARTs, there's SPI, there's I squared C, CSI, DSI, and they offer flexibility for connecting, controlling various industrial grade sensors, displays, and devices. Also, the external Wi Fi uh, avoids any USB 3 interface issues, which is really important in industrial applications. And if you're looking for a stable board with precision results, 
the rock board features components that are more suitable for industrial applications. So they are designed for industrial rather than okay for industrial. Um, rock boards also great at running on a heat sink alone. So you don't need to put a fan on some of these applications, which also means you're not going to get the noise that's coming off of that. So when we look at the rock GPU, um, the Arm Mali G610 MC4 GPU supports up to 8K, which is amazing and goes out through those dual HDMI ports. And this is advantageous if you're doing multimedia rich applications. So if you're doing applications like digital signage, industrial displays, or high resolution process imaging, that rock board is a great board to do those and tackle those applications. So a good board like those from Rock will give you the flexibility that a mass consumption make a board will not basically. So it puts the power back in your hands. So Richard, thank you, back to you. Brilliant. Um, I mean, what, what a journey um, that you've just shared with us there. And, you know, I know that you know, and, and I know well, the the explosion in the SBC space when Raspberry Pi yeah. launched in, in 2012, just a, a fantastic moment in time that's grown to be something really wonderful. Um, so just sort of taking um, what Pete said there and just moving on a little bit, you know, one of the things that we do at OKD on a daily basis is, is really look at, at the market and look at the challenges that our customers are, are, are facing into and, you know, looking for ways that we can either make their design process easier or solve some of those complex problems that they have. And I think um, as OK do, you know, we, we work with lots of different SBC manufacturers. Pete shared a few of the, the hot ones uh, that, that stand out at the moment, but we have a world-class line card. But the rock boards that we're focusing on today are really now our flagship into some of our industrial applications and, and some of the customers that we're working with. So, so with that, I think, you know, we... We sort of coin the phrase the professional's predicament. You know, when we when we look at what the the maker space and the students and the communities that we work with are doing with the boards, and then we look at what happens when those uh, go into industrial applications. We know that there's a real balancing act around making sure that engineers and developers can get the right level of performance, the right level of scalability, but do that in uh, a very competitive cost structure, actually what, what is born out of um, some of those SBCs and platforms that exist in the, in the more maker and education space. And what we've done is we've listened to our customers and we understand that there are unique applications that require tailored solutions. So in step one, we have developed a range of platforms that are off the shelf available to our customers globally to get prototyping and demos in the lab uh, going. And they are the rock series that you see today. So we have three key series of rock boards. Uh, we start at the entry level, which is the rock three series. In some instances, they share some similarities uh, to the Raspberry Pi 3 uh, and B plus uh, that exists in the market um, from a form factor perspective. But we've looked to enhance the options that we can give our industrial customers uh, and make sure that the cost price that they're coming at is around the $35 mark. We also then have the ROC4 series which is a powerful platform. Um, again, in some instances, because of this friendly uh, Raspberry Pi form factor is compared to the Raspberry Pi 4. But again, we have different variants available off the shelf, different memory configurations, but also we offer a ROC4 SE, which has an onboard antenna, and we offer the ROC4 C+, which actually has an offboard antenna for our industrial customers that are looking to route that antenna out of a complex enclosure or a particular spacing in an industrial application. And then as Pete shared already, 
we recently uh, launched the Rock 5 series. This is truly a next generation platform that really supersedes anything that's in the market today, particularly as Pete said, around some of the performance around the CPU uh, and also around the AI capability uh, that this platform offers uh, our industrial customers. So in summary, you know, we've got better power performance, um, really uh, good energy efficiency, um, really um, expandable storage, so options for customers depending on their design requirements, lots of versatility. And that versatility doesn't stop with the off-the-shelf uh, solutions that we have. We also offer a customization program as well, which uh, Divier will talk to a little bit later on in this session. So I think what we can see now, what we're talking about here is that there is a diverse and rapidly developing SBC market. You know, their industrial developers and engineers have access to some really excellent SBC solutions um, and the SBC market's evolving and so are the use cases and the market requirements. You know, if you think, I, I always talk about the early days of uh, automotive, you know, there was just Ford but now look at the car market today. And you know, I see a little bit of that from an OKDo OK perspective in the SBC market, but instead of that change happening over decades, you know, what we've seen as a team is that SBC change, that evolution of technology has really happened over the last five years where we've seen the most significant step change. And what I do know is that over the next 12 months, we, we're gonna see a lot, lot more. Our partners and suppliers that we work with, they're really only just getting started and they're seeing how the adoption of these low cost, small form factor, fantastic compute capability platforms are being used in a multitude of different applications and, and industries. And, you know, Raxa Rock is just one of the brands leading this charge, but I think it offers such a dynamic way of working and such a flexible way of working um, that we are really excited about where we're taking this product as we move into 2024. So just to summarize some of the things that you see on the rock boards that are a little bit different maybe to, to some of the other market leaders is that we see more storage and memory options, the option of EMMC and MVME sockets on the board, M2. This is something that is not commonplace in some of the market leaders. We've got variable input voltage allowing for more power as well as more power to peripherals and the growing ecosystem that sits around these platforms such as cameras for computer vision, displays for, for multitude of different POS applications. We also see in the rock range this ability to enable the low power A55 cores particularly for applications that have idle downtime, media servers, et cetera. This is something that's really a benefit for some of our industrial customers. We have more high-speed IOs. For example, the ROC 5B has four lanes uh, PCIe, um, again, which is not common on some of the other platforms in the market. And I think finally, you know, there's been this generational uh, revolution in the $35 space, you know, this ultra low cost space that I think, you know, Raspberry Pi did an incredible job um, in their early days uh, when they launched their first products. And now, for example, the ROC 3C is a prime example. It has a similar IO as a Raspberry Pi 5 uh, and USB 3, but with a lower CPU performance, which in many instances is perfect for some of the IoT and compute applications that our customers are, are working on. Now, I won't go into detail on this next slide, but it's just to say that, you know, there definitely are some tech titans now in the market. And I think Rock 5 and, and Raspberry Pi 5 are standing shoulder to shoulder in the market, offering customers this incredible versatility um, and, and technology options that, you know, really haven't been seen before up until the last 12 months. So with that, um, I want to, to hand over to, to Divier because I think we've got all of these boards, these platforms that are enabling so much uh, potential in the industrial space. 
But what happens when the board off the shelf isn't enough? And we see this on a regular basis. Uh, Divya is going to talk you through some options that we offer at OKDo to help our customers along the next step of their journey. So Divya, uh, I hope you're there and can hear me. I'll hand the floor to you. Yeah, thanks, Rich. And thanks to Pete as well for enhancing our knowledge on the single board computers and the current offerings that we have currently in the market, especially the rock range. I'm here to take my audience to take a deep dive in how these boards are customized to create real term real world solutions uh, for the applications which Pete has just discussed. So next slide, please. So yeah, so to enable the complete understanding of this customization, I would like the audiences to understand three critical questions. By three critical questions, I mean why, what, and how. Why these customizations are important. What are these customizations? So what we can customize in, uh, and what we can't and the complexity around it, and how we can create an ecosystem to really uh, do these customization projects successfully. So let's dive into this uh, detailed explanation of customization with our first question, why? So as you can see on the slide deck that there are a lot of applications, and Pete has also explained in his slide that SBCs are used for multiple applications around different industries. So do you think that a single solution can be a fix for all? I think it's not. And hence, there is a need to put customization of different boards uh, to different applications. For example, if you see there is an EV charger which is used outdoors and there is this camera detection, uh, there is a vehicle detection camera system that is put on the roads. So the tolerances and the Temperature requirement, the sensitivity is completely different to a slot machine used in a gaming parlor or uh, a home automation system used in our houses to control different things. So all of these applications require a different set of uh, connectors. They require different location of connectors. Hence, we have to customize these boards as per the application, uh, which, is, which is absolutely important. So yeah, moving on. So now we know why these are why this customization is important for uh, SPC market. Now we need to understand what can be customized, what is what are the types of customization that we can do, and what is the complexity around it. To answer this, I have put there are two levels of uh, customization that I feel. One is board level customization, where we are changing some specifications on the board. For example, we remove. Uh, some connectors, we add some uh, memories, or we, we change the locations of the board, of the connectors on the board. So if we are doing anything on the board, doing any alteration, that is a board level customization. But then there is a step up when we talk about solution level customizations. For example, if you want to put a single board computer with a sensor or a display or certain other housings that are required for certain applications like IP65 or IP68 housing for an outdoor application. So when we create a single board computer, which is more aligned to the complete solution, which is can, can be connected to a display and then fitted into an IP68 packaging for an outdoor application, that is like you have created a complete solution level customization. And there are various complexities around this. So Actually, I want to start with stage zero, which Richard has talked about in his explanation that we offer a lot of models. We offer a lot of uh, flexibility around memory options, EMMC options, whether you want a Bluetooth in that single board computer or you don't want that. So we already have created, like, created a lot of models that you can just choose, take it out of the shelf. And so there is no complexity there. There is as simple as that, you can order it and get it. But when we go to stage one, we talk about removal of some certain components. So just to achieve the optimization on the bomb, optimization on the cost, so we can remove HDMIs, USBs, M2, GPIOs, and whatnot. So anything that is not required in your application that can be removed, and it's low complexity, uh, low effort, but the gains are big in terms of the cost and optimization. 
so, but sometimes we feel that there is a replacement required. For example, for high temperature range applications, there is a requirement of connectors which are uh, which which can go up to high temperatures or low low temperatures, for example. So that's not a simple removal. It's about replacement. So we add the components uh, onto the top of the board. So that is stage two, where you need to go to the engineering and then you need to think about the implications. You think, you think about the uh, software changes that you have to do, and hence it's a stage two complexity. But once you decide to completely change the locations of the connectors or ICs as per the application, then it's like completely complex. We need a complete new design. Uh, it's a full, full fledged project in itself, but the benefits are that it, ha it gives you unparalleled flexibility and you can, you can get the same flexibility and same performance of the single board computer, but as per your desired application. So, this 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 whole thing will sum you up like why we need it and what can be changed but the the critical question is how it can be changed so in my belief that there is an ecosystem that needs to be generated to successfully deliver this customization project and the four key pillars of this ecosystem are design and engineering support manufacturing capabilities, compliance support, and the final kitting or assembly options. So I will walk you guys through in past few years, we, what we have created in OKDO uh, in terms of this ecosystem and how we are delivering the successful projects uh, for our customers. So if we talk about design and engineering support, we have a complete expert team, which are experts in hardware and software. They can evaluate your project, they can give you recommendations, and then they can turn your project into uh, an application-based solution. We also have the partnership with the uh, critical design houses who can turn around these designs, changes, and the challenges in very quick fashion. And lastly, we have a amazing after-sales service support from the engineers. So if you get stuck, even after purchasing these boards, we have an amazing engineering support for the after-sales services. Then if we talk about manufacturing capabilities, we are not just a single continent oriented company. We have partnerships in different countries like China, Vietnam, Poland, and United Kingdom. Especially I want to emphasize on uh, the partnership that we have in West, which are, which are amazing if you, talk, if you think about near shoring of a project. So if you want a project that want to be near shored or offshore, we have both the capabilities there. And for us, we don't treat any project based on the size, we can do a project which is just a prototype level, or we can do a mass production, uh, high scalable project. So size doesn't matter to us. So it's, it's more about the engineering capabilities that we bring al along with the manufacturing capabilities. If I talk about the compliance, because more, more often when you do these manufacturing projects, there is a compliance requirement attached. And we have the partnership with one of the largest compliance houses globally. And actually, we have done 15 plus projects last year on the customized side in the single board computing uh, industry, which is amazing in itself. So yeah, we are we are very well capable of uh, providing that compliance support to you guys. And then we finally we have our own RS Corby operations team, which are very flexible in uh, doing SD card flashing, programming, EMMC flashing and any sort of last minute operational uh, packaging uh, which 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 is required by our solution for a solution based customization project so if if a company has all these four key pillars of ecosystem and that ecosystem is there i think uh, that's the recipe of success and now like i think we have understood why we needed it what what is customization and how we can achieve that customization so Next is that I will take you through a customer journey that we are recently working with. So here you can see on the screen that there is an after and before image. So this is this is for a customer uh, who came with certain challenges and the challenges were that their solution was bulky. It was not cost effective. They had multiple suppliers, a complex supply chain. So they were dealing with this all these challenges uh, so they wanted a sustainable, more cost-effective, and a simple solution. 
So how the customer journey looked like was they came up with this problem and then our engineering team went into discovery mode. And then after the evaluation, we decided that we can offer them a single, single board computer from our rock range, which can act as a power management unit, which can act as a display connection, and then which can automatically translate it or talk to the uh, servers wirelessly. So it has an integrated antenna solution. So that was a complete solution that we built for them and the benefits. It's a plug and play system. So now we, when we send it, when we are sending these products to our customer, they can just plug and play. The unit cost has gone drastically down. So they are get they are getting more more value for money. They are just talking to us. So just one supplier. So their communications and the supply chain issues are resolved. And for us, as we are managing the whole supply chain, the complexity of this management has gone down. So this is one of the example. Uh, that how we are helping our customers to from from their problem stage to the solution stage. I hope that this whole presentation helped you to understand the capabilities and how a project in single board computers can be customized. Over to you, Rich. Thank you. Thanks, DVA. Yeah, really fascinating, and you know, great that you you showed the example of of, of some of the types of projects that we've been working on uh, this year. So I think that 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 brings us to the to the end of the the presentation. Um, but I, I know we've we shared a lot with you. You know, we've we've talked about the history of SBCs, this really exciting technology. We've talked about. The, the different platforms that are now available from Raspberry Pi to, to Rock to, to many, many others. And then, you know, this global proposition that we now have uh, where we offer our partners and our customers this flexible uh, design service to, to help accelerate applications and, and, and opportunity. So we'd like to open up for some questions. I know that, that Pete and uh, Divya are still with us. Um, and we'll open it up now for the next uh, 10, 15 minutes for, for any questions that anybody has. I know we've got people from all around the world on this call, from Australia and the, the US to, to India. Um, so looking forward to uh, any questions that you have. You can put your questions in the uh, chat bar as well, in the question bar. When you do that, I'll see those come through um, and I can help navigate them to the right expert on the call. Okay, so I can see some questions, Richard. Can you see that in the, uh, in the yeah, comments? It's coming, yeah, Great. it's coming through now. Yeah. Okay. Great. So let's pick a few. Oh, gosh, they're coming through thick and fast now. Yeah, was, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah okay, that's good. So um, let's do this. So actually, this one might be for you, Pete. Um, we've got uh, Connor here asking, which uh, SBC board would you recommend for AI applications? Wow. Okay. So there's quite a few. So actually, <laughs> I would probably, and one, it's a board we not mentioned actually today, I don't think, but the NVIDIA series of boards, uh, if you see them. So we've been doing quite a lot of work with NVIDIA recently. If you look at the NVIDIA uh, Jetson series, uh, they are a very, very capable boards for AI applications. Uh, some of the Rock 5 um, potentially depends on what you're doing, but some of the Rock 5 um, series, especially the I think it's the A or the B, I get mixed, which is the more powerful one, but there's some capability there depending on what you're doing, right? So, but NVIDIA is definitely one to look at. We've got we've got a full range from those guys on, the, on you can look on the OKD website. There's a ton of content supporting it. We've got some great application examples. Uh, so yeah, I'd look at I'd look at the NVIDIA Jetson series and also uh, look at some of the Rock 5 applications as well, depending on what you're doing. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, I'd, I'd echo that as well. I'm glad you brought the NVIDIA Jetson to the table because I think that that is a really fantastic 
platform. Um, okay, we'll keep going through some of the questions. I think actually there's a question from Sergi. Um, I think it's a question and a comment actually, but I think it's very interesting. Um, Sergi's made the point that the issue with the orange pie uh, five that you mentioned, Pete, in your um, presentation yeah. is that one of them, the camera, it has a camera interface and it's a, a special custom connector. And the only yeah. option is to use it with a custom board that has this, you know, long uh, or specific cable. Um, and I think so. The, the, I think the point, Sergio, the reason why I wanted to pick on this is that, you know, there, there definitely is a need to make sure that there's a, a, an ecosystem that is accessible by these platforms for this for the key uh, accessories that we see being used. I think I mentioned earlier displays, uh, cameras, different levels of enclosures. You know they are core to most applications. Whether you're a, a maker or a student, or whether you're you know going into an industrial application. So one of the things that we do look at, and we don't get this right every time, Sergi, but we are always looking at what does the ecosystem look like. What kind of software drivers are required and what kind of accessories do we need to make sure are available and make them either as agnostic or ambidextrous as possible so that they can be used across whether you're using a Raspberry Pi 5 or a rock board or, a, or an orange pie. Um, but that's work in progress, something that we're constantly trying to uh, trying to improve. So I'll take another question. Um, again, th this one, maybe Pete and I can do a double act on this, but Hernan uh, has asked, is the platform open source like Linux? I think by that he might be talking specifically about the rock boards. Um, so Pete, I don't know if you want to, to, to add anything there. Yeah. I can do, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, I mean, the, the Rock is very similar to the Pi. It'll run a Linux-based application uh, desktop, like, like a Debian-based desktop, so you can run Linux uh, on it. But actually, the capability of Rock as well, I believe, allows uh, some flavors of Android. I can't remember which. Again, that might be your domain, Rich, but Android is, is an Android capability. And potentially, I'm not sure where it is with Windows, Richard. Is there a Windows port that can go onto there as well? Yeah, so actually, um, we're, we're quite proud that Rock actually is one of the uh, the boards where we do have uh, a Windows option. Um, yeah. it, it's one of the, the platforms, that, one of the few actually that does, along with NXP, I think recently announced a Windows option as well. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, open source, we, we always try to work towards being as open as possible, but true open source, the, the rock boards don't uh, don't have that. We open up as much of the schematic as we can, uh, as much of the software uh, that we can, but there are some locked elements, um, a little bit like you see with a Raspberry Pi. Um, but hopefully there's enough out there for people to, to get to where they need to be with, with those platforms. Um, there's another question here from Eugenia. Uh, Eugenia is asking, how are the customers using the 5A? I, I think that's a, a great question. Maybe, um, Divya, if I pass that one to you. Um, I don't know from your experience with the customization and some of the customers you're working with, if you see some specific applications of the 5A. Yeah, I think uh, since the board has got a great capabilities, so uh, I've seen some of the customers in gaming industry uh, getting getting very excited for it and especially around some of the customers around EV chargers. So yeah. they are they are getting very interested into uh, Rock 5A and with the kind of uh, flexibility we have got in, in terms of customizing the Rock 5A, I think uh, we will be able to definitely provide the right solution. Yeah, I think that the 5A is a really fantastic uh, platform. You know, it's the it's the lower cost version of the 5B. Um, it uses a slightly dif different chipset that's uh, delineated with an S um, that many of the people on this call may have seen, which means it has, in theory, it has a slightly uh, lower uh, CPU performance. But what the 5A doesn't lack is the AI capability. Um, and you know what I've seen, to answer your question a bit more, Eugenia, is that we're seeing a lot of factory automation applications, particularly around quality control, where the ROC 5A is being situated on a production line with a camera setup, and it's detecting either faults or anomalies on the production line. And we're seeing multiple customers uh, over in Asia Pacific and in Germany 
Germany who are using the board um, to start to be part of their QA process on the production line, which I think is quite fascinating. And again, is just taking advantage of this differentiated AI performance at a fairly low cost point. Um, so I'm expecting that to be something that grows uh, as, as we move forward. Um, okay, so let me just uh, see what else is coming in here. Um, so we've got a question from Hannah, um, and I think maybe this one I'll come to you, Pete, to start with. But Hannah's asking, how does the use of the rock chip SOCs contribute to the overall performance and efficiency of the rock boards? You know, and how does this compare to other SBCs? And the reason why I'm coming to you first, Pete, is because you okay. talked a little bit about in your yeah. presentation some of the some of the uh, the, the technical specs there. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I think I think the the, the rock chips are an incredibly powerful, versatile, uh, you know, processor. Um, they are in some of the uh, in in a number of boards actually, um, including I think the um, uh, was it Banana Pie and some of these other clones as well. But so it's quite a well established uh, part out, out in Asia. So it it's um, you know you compare that to like the Broadcom chip uh, that's on the the Raspberry Pi again very very capable chip that's on there um but I think you know there's that there, these um uh, rock chips are certainly gaining ground on those processes they're, they're very versatile they're very capable they're very powerful they offer lots of interface options um I think it just it sort of brings a new dimension into some of the applications that you can do right um so so yeah that, that, that's that's what I'm seeing yeah, br brilliant. Yeah, I think I think that's a great a great summary. Um, we've we've probably got time for a, 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 one more question. I've got one come through here actually. Um, I think it's uh, from Michael. Michael's asking. Um, I talked about displays being a key part of the ecosystem around SBCs, and um, Michael's wanting to know what what type of applications are we actually seeing in in the market. I think that's a great question, actually, because I do mention displays uh, qu quite frequently. Um, and I think what we are absolutely seeing is that, moreover, SBCs are being placed in specific enclosures, um, whether they be industrial or otherwise, with a display integrated into that enclosure. Um, and we are seeing a lot of uh, applications now with our industrial customers in the entertainment space, um, particularly uh, in uh, the likes of casinos where um, SBCs are used for data capture and then displaying that data in different formats. We're also seeing it uh, in this r explosion we've seen over the last few years in uh, fast food establishments or eateries where there is a POS uh, display. And um, we're seeing SBCs with displays being part of that overall solution. And that, again, is something that is just uh, growing rapidly. Actually, Divya mentioned as well <coughs> EV charging. And as many of us here who are using <coughs> electric cars will know that a lot of the charging units um, have a level of display um, uh, attached. And again, we see the SBCs, particularly in the rock world, where security and performance are absolute paramount with that display output. Uh, that, that is something that we're seeing a lot of in the market. And uh, we're excited to see, to see how that progresses. And even, um, even, go ahead, and even, sorry. Yeah, even in the, uh, since we have, a now we are getting the capability of 8K display, uh, like connectivity with the raw single board computer. So in digital marketing also, there is a uh, quite, some of the customers are coming and are inquiring about the dis digital marketing displays and using the single board computers that we have for rock. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, the questions keep coming in. I'm I'm trying to keep up. We'll we'll go. We'll, we've got time for a few more. So, um, Fred um, asked. Uh, it's a statement again and a question which I think is fascinating uh, yeah. and very much on point. Um, how will Risk Five affect the SBC and MCU landscape? Um, any plans to build Risk Five? Um, Fred was excited to discover the Rockchip RV1103 SOC inside the Lookfox. Pico mini board, which I actually also recently uh, discovered. Um, 
I, I'll start and then I think I'll hand over to, to Pete and Divya because I think this is yeah. a really, really exciting um, part of, of our expansion. So the, the first thing is I think Risk 5 is going to disrupt a lot of what we see uh, in the market. There's already some incredible platforms coming out from the likes of BeagleBone who've just launched uh, their new Risk 5 platform, as well as a lot of what SciFi are doing uh, in the SBC space. Um, as OK do, we absolutely are making plans to move into the Risk 5 area. Um, we already have some platforms in development, which I'm excited to share. The details of that we'll share more at CES uh, and uh, at Embedded World next year. Um, but I, I do see this as a disruptive um, part of the SBC space. And I know, Pete, you've probably got some views on this as well. I totally agree. I think Risk Five is a really exciting area. It's a totally disruptive technology. It's taking on the big boys like ARM. You know, it's, it's sort of you know eating their lunch if you like. But it's incredible how that technology has evolved in the last sort of two, two, three years. And yeah, I've been excited to see how that's getting adopted into into many applications. Some of the you know some of the big semiconductor companies are looking at having um, Risk Five uh, cores as well. So really interested to see where that's going to go. Um, it hopefully bring the cost maybe even down more of some ships because of the licensing obviously um, isn't isn't there like you get with the arm and stuff. So yeah, I'd be really interested to see how that goes on. And from a security perspective, I know there's quite a few sort of university projects going on where they're using risk five based technology to keep um, more secure processing technologies um, and, and locking those down, which is super, super important in this world of connectivity we live in. So yeah, really exciting space. Really interested to see how it evolves. Yeah, and I was going to say for Fred and for anybody else on the call with us today, um, the Design Spark community that, that Pete um, establishes and runs will be a great place for you to find information about Risk 5 as it evolves over the coming months. So uh, I'd ask you all to take a look there and, and see what updates, blogs and information that we're going to be sharing. But I think we can all expect a, an exciting 2024 uh, when it comes to, to Risk 5. Um, a couple more questions, actually, I'm going to loop a few together. Uh, Simon and Lopel, they're all asking about the uh, neural processor on the on the ROC5. So Simon is asking, is the neural processor on the ROC5 important? Where could we use it? But I think it's linked to that. Lopel is also asking around, you know, will Raspberry Pi advanced with, with the MPU um, and, and AI capability? Um, I think... You know, I'll, I'll start. Uh, well, I'll start with Lopal, actually. Who knows? With Raspberry Pi, I think they are a fantastically innovative company. Um, I am sure um, with the emergence of the Raspberry Pi 5 and the, the missings that it has from a, an MPU, uh, GPU perspective, um, that they will be looking to catch up uh, as quickly as possible. Um, so I do think Raspberry Pi will advance. But but actually, we don't know when that will be. And I think that's why, to answer Simon's question, that's why the, the neural process in the AI capability on, on the ROC5 is important right now, because we are seeing an explosion of industrial applications that require a level of TOPS capability at, at, at tensor operations per second, tensor flow. Um, and I think that we're in a really uh, privileged position that the ROC5 a and B uh, are available and shipping now and really helping customers get off the ground. Um, Pete, uh, Divier, I don't know if you want to add anything around the, the sort of the AI capability on the, on the ROC5 and why we think that's uh, so, so important as we move forward. Yeah, I think like you were saying, Rich, I think as we move forward, you know, AI is, is cropping up in all kinds of applications that you wouldn't even dreamed of, you know, why you would utilize it. And you can see now with smart factory applications and predictive and preventive maintenance, you know, all doing, you know, at, at, on the edge there. It, it's just, it, it's the natural evolution of an SBC to be able to incorporate that technology. And it has, and, and it, you know, that's that's the way it's evolving. So it's a great time that we've got that capability now. Um, and I'm sure it will develop further as, as the, and increase the capabilities we go forward. So, but yeah, it's, it's definitely something that we need in these times. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think we've probably got, time for one more question um this is a, a really a, a interesting one and one actually that when i'm 
uh, out and about at trade shows and different events, I get asked quite a lot. And that is, uh, Kegel is that saying, OK, do you sell single ball computers from lots of vendors? Um, why doesn't OK do you sell Raspberry Pi boards or do we? So, um, yes, yeah, the first part of your question, Kegel, we do. So we, we are really proud partners of uh, Raxa Rock, uh, Asus, uh, Beagle, um, work that we do with with NXP, with Arduino Pro, um, and you know we make all those platforms available to our customers around the world through both OKDo, OK the RS Group, and uh, some of our really key strategic uh, distribution and, and reseller partners. So you're right, we we do that, and that's a really important part of our proposition. And um, we have been involved with Raspberry Pi for the longest time, going back even just before 2012 when the explosion happened in the Raspberry Pi space. And we've had this wonderful partnership. Um, actually, in 2022, um, through uh, the uh, kind of pandemic and some of the supply chain problems, we looked at our go forward strategy and we made a, a pivot. Um, into not just having Raspberry Pi as our as our product, but actually moving into the rock boards and many other uh, technologies. So today we don't sell the core uh, Raspberry Pi boards um, per se as an approved reseller or as a as a manufacturer, but actually we do still work with Raspberry Pi with regards to their RP2040, the the little microprocessor that they came out with, and we continue to work with our industrial customers where that that chip and that microprocessor is the right choice um but actually the boards themselves we've we've pivoted away into some other areas where we we found better synergy with our industrial customers um, but we still watch raspberry pi with, with great fondness and you know we're always looking at what they're going to do next and uh, you know how that's going to grow and expand this exciting market that we're in um so so with, with that i think we're we're coming up to the top of the hour um, I think we've managed to get through most of the questions that have come through um, thank you so much for, for joining us thank you for the engagement uh, Pete and Divier thank you for the presentations so with that I think we can bring the webinar to a close and I'll say goodbye good night to everybody thanks all thank you thank you cheers cheers